Yeah. And so, you know, with these conversations, I always like to start about the on the ground realities. You know, you're from Texas, as I mentioned, but your district spans the southern um, the suburban area between Fort Worth and Dallas. So you're a little further from the southern border. But how does the migrant and border crisis impact your district? I mean, the fact is, just because we're not on the southern border doesn't mean like we're not every other, you know, state that's being affected by this directly. But Texas is taking a hit. You know, when you consider that 60 percent of the getaways of people entering our country illegally have been coming through Texas, 40 percent of the illegal immigrants who've come in, you know, of the 10 million who've come in the last three years have entered through Texas and gone through that state. We're definitely seeing it in North Texas. When you um, if you if you were to be a fly on the wall for some of my law enforcement roundtables, you will hear directly from the sheriffs that they see increased crime, in, increased um, um, gang activity, definitely increased drug activity. You know, the number of people that we have had now targeted and um, died from fentanyl poisonings alone is shocking, and it's gone up triple digits. So yesterday, the Senate re released a bipartisan aid proposal for Ukraine, Israel, and border security. So what are your reactions to that agreement? Do you support the deal, especially on the border? You know, I, I've got, to, it was just released last night. I've spent all morning pouring into it. And I got to tell you, I'm just so disappointed in that bill. <laughs> you know, what they want to do is they want to take the numbers that we are seeing now and they want to normalize them. And just to put it into context, during Obama administration and Trump administration, if they had more than a thousand illegal crossings in a day that was considered a crisis and they addressed it. What this bill wants to do is actually normalize 5,000 people, I'm sorry, 4,999 people, you know, allowing them to come over on average in a week um, each day. And actually that could be upwards of 8,500 people a day. Now, do the math, that's about 2 million illegal immigrants entering our country illegally every year. It's just staggering. And then on top of it, they wanna give work permits, um, they are allowing children again to be used as as child slaves, basically being bought and sold over our borders. It does nothing to help build the wall. It does nothing to help local law enforcement or to partner with our state law enforcement officers. Um, and then they want a ton more money for not doing their job. Where they want to put that money is expediting more illegals into our country. Um, you can't normalize these numbers when we're seeing record breaking every month. Last month alone, we had 300,000 people enter our country. Um, you are seeing increases in crime. You are seeing criminal illegal aliens right now that are committing rapes, murders, DUI deaths. And it's a complete new era of narco slavery at our borders right now. And this bill from the Senate does nothing to address that. What do you say to the people that might ask, why is no deal better than this one? Well, I would say that we don't have to have a brand new law to be able, we don't need a new bill coming out of Congress. What we do need to do is force this administration to follow the laws that are currently on the books. During the Trump administration, you had a very clear policy from for CBP. It was uh, deport criminal illegal aliens, it was to let's secure our border and it was to have people apply for asylum from either Mexico or the first safe country that they came into, recognizing the fact that nearly 80 or 90 percent of the people who apply for asylum don't qualify. So what you have seen from this administration is they have a catch and release program. People are encouraged to come to the border. They're picked up. They're put on buses. They're put on planes and they're sent now to cities across the country. If they were to just enforce the laws that we currently have, which the president has absolute power to do, considering that he's taken those powers away, you know, from CBP to do their job, if he were simply to enforce the laws right now, we could have control of our borders tomorrow. And you can see that in Texas. Texas has actually had to take it upon itself. They had to spend $5 billion last year alone. This year, they're stepping it up and they're spending over $6.4 billion to do the job that the federal government should be doing. But what you're seeing is actually in Texas, when you in, enforce our laws, they're seeing decreases in the number of people who are coming at our borders. And instead, they're going through states like Arizona. They're going through states like California that are not doing as good of a job. And I'll tell you, if all of the border states got together and decided we're going to end this illegal immigration, we are going to secure our borders, they could do it. 